If I mentioned the word call, would you know what that is? Would you recognize it? What would you do with it? Specifically, a call from the 16th century. But before we get started, make sure to select thumbs up if you like the video. If you have questions, please post them in the comments below and subscribe. Now on to today's discussion. Is this what you picture when you think of a call? Is that what you picture when you think of a call? Do you think it looks good with a proper writing hat? Or is this what you think of when I mention a call? And again, with the proper writing hat. Well, if what you thought a call is what you see in the picture here, then you are correct. This is a 16th century linen call. So what makes a call a call? A call was a hair covering worn on the back of the head by ladies in the latter half of the 16th century. It could be worn by itself, or it could be worn under a flat cap, a veil, a tall hat, or some other head covering. As seen in the picture on the right, you would in the 16th century, they did have hair in it, so some for the purposes of this discussion, we'll just say that crochet came into existence in the, we'll say the later half of the 17th century. So what you find at a Renaissance festival is not, is probably not historically accurate. For the 16th century, there were hairnets and they were called crispines or lattice caps. They were typically made by knotting cord together like a fishnet. Calls were typically made from linen. They could either be plain or have decoration on them, such as netted cord, spangles, embroidery, silverwork. Calls, technically they could have been made from satin, velvet, silk, or brocade. However, due to Elizabethan sumptuary laws, those laws dictated which women could wear decoration and which women had to wear plain calls. So unless your husband was of good standing and in the queen's favor, good chance you were probably wearing just a simple white linen call. These same laws um, ordered all women, unless they were gentlewomen or the wives of nobility, to cover their hair, which is why during the 16th century, you find portraits of especially lower class people all with their heads covered. Ways to know that you are talking about a call versus say something else like a coif. A call is round, it goes on the back of the head, and aside from the circle, you then have a layer of fabric that wraps around the head. So you have the circle on the back, the layer of fabric going around the head to hold it in, but it's back off of the head. Coifs, not always, but typically would cover the ears. You would have other headwear like French hoods or something that would cover the ears. Calls were always on the back of the head and exposed the ears, just like when I showed you this earlier on my head. It sat on the back part of my head. Historically, what the woman would have done is she would have had her hair plated with two braids with ribbon, and then those braids would be up around her head. So imagine my hair is braided here goes up and over, and then they would take the ribbons that were braided in the hair and wrap the braids around and almost sew it into their hair to hold those braids in place on the back of their head, and then the call would sit on top. So it, as I said, you have a circle and then that piece of fabric in front. So imagine that piece of fabric in front, and then that little lift where my braid is is where that circle would then be sitting but we'll get more into the design of the call later. So if you look on the top picture on the left-hand side, at the very top, it says calls, followed by sleeves, partlets, etc., with spangles, gold, silver, pearls, and it gives you more descriptions as well as the exceptions. On the bottom left-hand corner, you will find an excerpt from the diary of Sir James Melville, and with it, he mentions at one point, at one point he mentions his discussion with Queen Elizabeth. And she was asking him 
about her dress and which one he liked best on her. And he mentions, or he says that he liked the Italian dress best and she was delighted because it, the Italian dress showed off her golden colored hair while wearing a call and a bonnet as they do in Italy. In the bottom right hand corner, you will find an excerpt from the book by Philip Stubbs called The Anatomy of Abuses, and it's from 1583. And in it, he mentions calls. And they have also other ornaments besides these to furnish forth their ingenious heads, which they call calls. And then it continues on. So here's another reference to calls from 1583. So here are some exam historic examples of calls in paintings. And also, just so you know, in Queen Elizabeth's wardrobe, there were listings of calls made of wire, braided hair, and chain lace. On the far left-hand side is a painting from 1578. You can see the white linen call. It's sitting on the back of her head just holding those braids in place. It's exposing her ears and the front part of her hair. In the middle, this looks similar to a call, but as you can see, it has decoration around it. Obviously, she is not lower class, and this is from 1543. And on the right-hand side is a painting from 1532. You see calls more in the later part of the 16th century, but this still is reminiscent of what a call looks like. It's white, it's on the back of the head, it exposes the ears and the front part of her hair. And here are more historic examples of calls during the 16th century. On the left-hand side is a painting from 1590. Again, you can see the white poofy, well, not poofy. You can see the white small circle on the back with the piece of fabric on the front part, but sitting on the back of her head, you can see the ears are exposed. You can see the front part of her hair with the part down the middle. They always parted their hair down the middle. And next to that picture is another example of a call. Again, same thing, white circle on the back, holding the hair inside of it, the rim of the call right um, behind the ears, exposing the hair, part down the middle. Same for the picture in the middle, the same for the picture next to that, and the same for the picture on the far right. As you can see, they're pretty much all a similar, if not the same design. So let's talk about the design. How do you make a call? On the far left-hand side is a picture. Just to give you an idea, you want to take a piece of linen, you want to cut out your circle, about 10 to 12 inches in diameter. That just depends on how small or how poofy you want your call to be. The poofier it is, the more like a hair bag it looks, rather than just something simple to hug your head. And then as far as the rim around the circle, that is the picture on the top right that says 19 to 21 inches long. With that, you will want to measure from the base of your neck, go up around your head and then back to the other side. You want this strip of fabric to be about three inches long. Also, when you measure around your head the 19 to 21 inches, make sure to give yourself a little bit of a seam allowance. Depending on how much you like for a seam allowance, I would, for me personally, I would add about half an inch, but that's for me because I like to run the edge of my fabric right along the side of my foot on my sewing machine if I'm using my sewing machine. And I use that for my hand sewing as well. But you want your strip of fabric to be about three inches long. And then with that, the picture underneath that, you will see it's from Drea Leeds website. And that picture, it shows you take the fabric and then fold it over. But then also you'll take that three inches Fold it over so your rim is only about one and a half inches wide, but then you'll also want to tuck in the edges so that way the rough edges are inside, and then you pin the big circle into that call or into that rim. 
If you want a step-by-step -step tutorial, I've got a link down below where I made a call previously and show you step-by-step -step on how to make a call. If you want more information or have questions, here is my Works Cited page. And here's some more links to access if you're curious. Here's what a call would look like. Obviously, my hair is not parted in the middle like you would find in historic paintings, so please forgive me on that. But as you can see, I've got the white linen in the back. My ears are exposed. I've got the front part of my hair showing. And then with that, you can then decide if you want to leave it as it is by itself or if you would want to put a veil or a hat over top of it. Based on research and paintings that I found, I found flat caps or Elizabethan tall hats were quite popular in Elizabethan England to go with your call. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Post them in the comments below. If you like this video, select thumbs up that you liked it. And as always, please subscribe.